During Artemis I, the European Service Module, ESA's contribution to NASA's Orion spacecraft, successfully propelled the spacecraft forward to the moon and beyond. During Artemis II, it will once again serve as Orion's primary power and propulsion component and keep the spacecraft at the right temperature and on course. The difference? This time, real astronauts will be on board. I'm the most proud of is that it's the first time Europe is committed to send astronauts beyond low Earth orbit. So far, during the last 20 years, we have mostly flown to the International Space Station. But for the first time, a group of astronauts will fly uh, to uh, the Gateway first, to lunar orbit, and ultimately to the surface of the Moon. And the European Service Module is a key contribution to this uh, transition from operation in low Earth orbit to the operation in the lunar domain. And ultimately, also farther up to Mars. The first flight of Artemis 1 that was to test the vehicle without a crew on board. So here we have undergone extensive testing with all the propulsion subsystem, the thermal and so on. But now that we're having crew, that's the new element for Artemis 2 on onwards. So that means for Artemis 2 we will really go into the testing of the uh, life support systems and try to figure out how is that behaving with the astronaut in the loop, how is the CO2 scrubbing working on the crew module side, how are we providing the oxygen to the astronauts and the water. So all these elements will be new for Artemis 2. On top, Artemis 2 is foreseeing to do proximity operations in uh, the low Earth orbit um, between the uh, upper stage of the SLS and the service module or this Orion spacecraft. And here also the new element will be to have the astronauts in the loop to do the steering. How is the spacecraft working? How is it behaving if an astronaut is giving an, an impulse or a command? And those elements are the ones which will be super excited for the Artemis 2 mission. And then of course Artemis 3, once we go to the moon, once we go to the lunar surface, then this will be additional research, additional getting to know our vehicle and seeing how, how it's behaving. The next major milestone, as you can see behind me, is that there is no uh, capsule on the top, no crew module, no capsule on top of the OSM. So the next major step will be the assembly of the crew module with uh, the European Service module, which is behind me. Once this crew module and the ESM uh, are assembled, for the first time we will have an Orion Artemis II vehicle, fully integrated. We will test it again, very thoroughly, and when it has been tested and it's good to go, we will handle the vehicle to the ground operation of NASA to start the further processing and preparation for the launch. That's real, that's it. It's, it's starting to feel very, very real. It's not a dream, it's a program, it's real hardware. We're touching it, we're, we're talking to the experts, we're, we're on a path, like we, yesterday we spent a lot of time meeting other teams in addition to this team in this building, but other teams on site and just how much work there is to do and how hard they're working, like how much overtime these people are putting in you know, not for a week. We're talking about they're grinding it out over the next you know year and a half or so to to try and uh, take us back to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. And as an international collaboration, I mean, they're bought in. They're putting all their effort into it. It's amazing. It's been a fabulous partnership with our ESA partners. You know, I think you know, the the agency made a decision a long time ago that we want to do uh, lunar exploration as a as a global partnership. And the ESA contributions have been fantastic. You know, our, our ESM one flew for the first time on Artemis one end of last year and we couldn't have been more pleased with the performance we got out of that part of the spacecraft. We used less power than we expected. We generated more power than we had modeled. We used less prop than we had expected. I mean just all of these great things and the performance of that spacecraft. So that European partnership has been fantastic and with the Artemis Accords you know the the agency is pulling in more and more countries to help be part of this global global exploration initiative. Today we stand together with ESA and NASA to say thank you ESM. Europe's contribution is key to the journey back to the moon and the next giant leap for humankind.